You're welcome back. Today we are asked to solve for x. If 1 to the power of x plus 3 to the power of x is equal to 9 to the power of x. Okay, first, let's divide through by 9 to the power of x, okay? Divide through, divide through by 9 to the power of x, okay? So if we do that, we have 1 to the power of x divided by 9 to the power of x plus 3 to the power of x divided by 9 to the power of x is equal to 9 to the power of x divided by 9 to the power of x. Now, remember that a to the power of m divided by b to the power of m is equal to a over b raised to the power of m. Okay? So, that means that we can write this as 1 over 9 raised to the power of x plus 3 over 9 raised to the power of x is equal to 1. Because when this divides itself, you will have 1. Now, recall that 1 is something as 1 squared and 9 is something as 3 squared, right? Raised to the power of x plus. Now, 3 divide itself. We divide this to give us 3. So what we have here is 1 over 3 raised to the power of x is equal to 1. All right. Now, look at what we have here. Look at what we have here. When you have a to the power of m divided by b to the power of m is equal to a divided by b raised to the power of m. Okay? So that means that we can write this. Okay? We can write this as 1 over 3 raised to the power of 2 everything raised to the power of x. Right? Yes. Plus 1 over 3 raised to the power of x is equal to 1. Now, we continue. Remember that when you have a to the power of m raised to the power of n, okay? It's equal to a to the power of m times n. All right. And this is also equal to a to the power of n raised to the power of m. So it means that the power can be interchanged. All right? Yes. So we now write this as... 1 over 3 raised to the power of x, everything raised to the power of 2, okay? Plus 1 over 3 raised to the power of x is equal to 1. Now, you can see that we have, they have something in common here, right? So, you can say, let 1 over 3 raised to the power of x be equal to 1. So, if we make that statement, then we will write this as y squared plus y is equal to 1. Okay? So, notice that we just formed a quadratic equation. Yes. So, what do we do from here? Let's arrange this well. So, we have y squared plus y, then plus 1, we cross to become minus 1, is equal to 0. So, this is our quadratic equation. Okay? So, we are going to solve this using the quadratic equation formula that states that y is equal to minus y minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac, everything divided by 2a. Now, our a is equal to the coefficient of y squared, which is 1. Our b is the coefficient of y which is also 1. And our C is our constant, which is minus 1. Now, let us substitute this into this place to get Y. But remember that we are not looking for the value of Y. Rather, we are looking for the value of X, and we are going to get that from Y. So, I would like you to watch to the end and see how we got that. So, we continue. Now, we have Y will be equal to minus 1 plus or minus square root of minus 1 squared minus 4 multiplied by 1 multiplied by minus 1, okay? Now, everything divided by 2 multiplied by 1, okay? Now, we have that y is equal to minus 1 plus or minus the square root of minus 1 squared is the same thing as 1 squared, which is 1, 
Then minus minus is plus, and 4 times 1 is 4, okay? Divided by 2. So we have y is minus 1 plus or minus square root of 5 divided by 2. Now, what are you seeing here? We have two values of y. We have two values of y, which will give us, excuse me, let's clean this so that we have enough space to work with, okay? All right. Yeah. Now, from here, we can see that y is equal to minus 1 plus root 5 divided by 2, and y is also equal to minus 1 minus root 5 divided by 2. But I want you to remember, even though I've claimed it, recall where we said let 1 over 3 raised to the power of x be equal to y. That is what we said, right? Let 1 over 3 raised to the power of x be equal to y. Now, if we say such, that means that for us to get the value of x, we will introduce log to both sides of this equation. And remember that you cannot find the logarithm of a negative number. So if our y is negative, then the answer is undefined. Now, let us come here. Notice that y2 will give us a negative answer, so we cannot use it to give us an undefined result since you cannot find the uh, logarithm of a negative number. So we are going to forget this and use y1 for our y, okay? All right, now remember that y, which is minus, okay, 1 over 3. Let me clean this so that I'll have enough space to work with, okay? Now, according to this, 1 over 3 raised to the power of x is equal to our y, and this is y, minus 1 plus square root of 5 raised to the power of 2. Now, like I said, we can only solve this using log reading since what we are looking for is our power. So we introduce log, introduce log to both sides, okay? So if we do that, we are going to have log 1 over 3 raised to the power of x is equal to log minus 1 plus root 5 divided by 2. Okay? All right. Now, remember that remember that log recall okay, please excuse me. Let me clean this. Yeah. Now, recall that log a raised to the power of b is equal to b multiplied by log a. So that means that we can write this as x multiplied by log 1 over 3, right? So we have x multiplied by log 1 over 3, okay, is equal to log minus 1 plus root 5 divided by 2. All right? Now, let's divide both sides of this equation by log 1 over 3. So, we have this side divided by log 1 over 3, okay? And this side divided by log 1 over 3. So, that log 1 over 3, we divide itself. So, we are left with x is equal to log minus 1 plus root 5 divided by 2 divided by log 1 over 3. Now, recall that log A divided by log B is equal to log A base B. Yes. So, that means that we can write this as, we can write this as X is equal to log minus 1 plus root 5 divided by 2 base 1 over three and that is the answer thank you so much for watching see you in my next video